Continuing onward from where we left off in the previous video, we're still working on part 035, user-defined functions. And I want to talk about a kind of a weird feature in MATLAB where functions can have zero or more inputs and can adapt to that. And we'll look at how that's done. And specifically, we're going to be looking at nargin in and narg out. Now, I first have this example right here, draw star, which is a function, which is a function I created. And it draws this little star for us right here. Let's open up draw star and take a look at it. All right, here's the draw star function. It returns no output and it takes no input. I put extra spaces here just to emphasize that fact. These spaces are optional. And then it uses polar plot to draw that star that you saw on the screen. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna continue forward here. And now I have a fancier version of it called draw star A. And what's interesting about draw star A is it adapts to whether or not you are setting a variable equal to it. So let's check this out. All right, so I did generate two figures, one from the first call to draw star A and one from the second call to draw star A, and they are identical. Okay, so that's fine and good. But only one of them actually printed out twinkle, twinkle, little star. And also these printed differently, right? One output detected versus no output detected. So let's look at the code and see how draw star was able to figure out that we set this variable equal to it. In the function header up here, we do have an output variable in the square bracket. So this capital A can provide output from this function. Now then we've got the same code as before right here to actually generate that polar plot that draws the star. And then we say if nargout equals equals one. Now nargout, at least that's how I pronounce it, I guess you could say nargout. It's short for, I believe, number of output arguments. And here we're using an if statement, which I will cover in later videos, to say, well, if the number of output arguments is the same as one, well, then we'll display this output detected and we'll give an output of twinkle, twinkle, little star into that output variable A. Otherwise, we'll display that no output was detected and we don't even set A equal to anything at all. So this nargout is provided by MATLAB as a way for you to detect how external code is using the function that you're writing and potentially adapting to it. Now, nargin in and narg out can also be used in other ways. So here we're seeing them used as functions. So we're asking the nargin in or nr or narg out functions about the sign function and how many input arguments it has, the number of input arguments or the number of output arguments. Control enter. And in both cases it's one, right? We give one number in to the sign function and we get one number back out. I should note that nargin and nargout are provided in Octave, and they do the same thing, but they don't work on all the same functions. So in Octave, they don't work on built-in functions such as sign, but they will definitely work on your user-defined functions and a variety of other functions as well. I should also note about this section, um, there's nothing particular about it that doesn't really work in Octave, except that Octave doesn't have the polar plot function. So the polar plot is not gonna work for the Octave users. Here's another example with the remainder function. So for example, if I'm looking at the remainder when I take nine and then divide it by two, well, it should be remainder one. That's what I get. Or if I do the remainder of uh, 50 when I divide it by seven, well, that's also remainder one because I didn't think about that real hard before I did that in my head. All right, let's try that. There we go. 52 divided by seven, remainder three, right? Because 49, yeah, I should have thought about that before I wrote it. Anyway, let's run this section. So the remainder function takes two inputs. So nrg in parentheses, and you do have to put the word, the name of the function in quotation marks, but the number of input arguments to remainder is in fact two, and the output is just one. Continuing on down, motion. This is one of our user-defined functions, which I showed just a couple of videos ago, but they were short videos. So here very briefly is that function, and you can see it returns up to three outputs. And if we run nrg in and nrg out, it works perfectly. One input to the motion function, up to three outputs. Now what about plot? Plot's a little bit weird. It says that the number of input arguments is negative one. How strange, that's not really true. However, plot is a little bit complicated because it takes different numbers of input arguments. So the example right below shows, here's plot with two arguments, two inputs, and here's plot with five arguments or five inputs. And both of these work, and I run this section, and I just get two different figures. So the way that the nrg in function handles that weirdness about plot, that flexibility of plot, 
is by displaying the negative 1 there. And what about the display function itself? Well, display has one input, the thing that we are trying to display out, as demonstrated in most of these examples, and it doesn't return anything. There are no output arguments, right? It is not correct to assign a variable to the display function, and in fact, it will give you an error if you try to do so. So that was just a brief little video on nargin and nargout. This wraps us up for part 035 user-defined functions, and we'll move on from this file in the next video.